Welcome to the GC3 Startup Network webinar on the ChemSec Marketplace, an exchange platform for green chemistry alternatives. We will give people a few more minutes to log in and we will begin shortly. Thank you. All right, let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, welcome again to the GC3 Startup Network webinar on the Chem ChemSec Marketplace, an exchange platform for green chemistry alternatives. My name is Julie Manley. I'm the coordinator of the GC3 Startup Network. To provide some background as we get started for those that are less familiar with the GC3, the Green Chemistry and Commerce Council is a cross-sector business-to-business -business network of companies and organizations working collaboratively to accelerate green chemistry across sectors and supply chains. Our mission is to drive the commercial adoption of green chemistry by catalyzing and guiding action across all industries, sectors, and supply chains. Our GC3 members are champions and innovators, as you can see from our more than 120 members across the value chain including chemical companies, manufacturers of a wide variety of products from beauties to textiles and everything in between, brands and retailers in the US as well as abroad. This webinar was organized as part of the GC3 Startup Network, an initiative within the Green Chemistry and Commerce Council. The goal of the Startup Network is really twofold. One, to support the green chemistry startups in bringing new technologies to market, and also to introduce major companies uh, that are our members to new chemical technologies with opportunities for potential partnership and investment. Members of the GC3 Startup Network range from seed stage companies to more advanced startups with a number of rounds of venture capital funding. These startups receive the full membership ben benefits of the GC3, but also receive tailored resources to meet their needs. So for example, they are able to tap into our network of major corporations through our mentoring program to seek expertise in a, sub in a subject that's particularly relevant to them, which could include anything from market guidance to understanding joint development agreements and whatever the need may be. <clears throat> our startups also participate in our annual technology showcases where we bring together startups to present to and network, wi network with our large corporate members. Sometimes the topics are very focused, and other times we are intentionally broad to engage a broader scope of innovation. We are now planning our fourth annual technology showcase, which will be at the 2019 Annual Innovators Roundtable, May 7th through 9th of this year, hosted by Procter & Gamble Fabric Care in Cincinnati, Ohio. We are currently seeking companies to apply to be considered for a presentation at the event, where we, the idea is that we will be selecting 10 startups that will be identified as semi-finalists and invited to give a pitch or to participate in a pitch competition on May 7th in front of major brands, retailers, manufacturers, and investors. Three of those companies will then be selected to present their uh, startup on the main stage of the GC3 Annual Innovators Roundtable in front of approximately 200 people from our member companies on May 8th. These three companies will be pitching their companies not only to the audience, but also more specifically to a panel, panel of experts, including, uh, as of right now, the Chief Technology Officer of Eastman Chemical Company, as well as uh, the Chemistry Center of Excellence from Nike. The deadline to apply for consideration is February 1st, so please, I'd say please apply now, but actually I'm going to hold off and ask that you apply after the webinar. So as we transition to, today, to today's webinar, I just want to quickly go over some logistics. First, due to the number of participants we have on the call today, uh, all lines are muted. 
If you have a question or comment, please type it in to the questions box located in the control panel. And please type these questions at any time during the webinar. Uh, it's best if they come in uh, earlier, the better, and we can, we can uh, try to address them uh, and be ready for the Q&A at the end of the session. Questions will be answered at the end of, we have two presentations today. The questions will be answered at the end of both, of, at the end of the presentations uh, that they both will provide. So then, as we get started, I would like to go ahead and uh, begin with introductions. I'm very pleased to introduce, introduce Sonia Haida, Senior Business and Investors Advisor for Chemsec. During her eight years at Chemsec, she has previously been responsible for Chemsec's investors, net, investors work, establishing a network of investment professionals and imp implementing chemical questions in investment analysis of different investment market actors. She uses her background in the field of finance and economics as an accredited observer at the Socioeconomic Analysis Committee of the European Chemical Agency. Currently, she is the project manager for Chemsec Marketplace. In addition, I'd like to go ahead and introduce Christian Schimper, founder and owner of Actcel, excuse me, a company that is also a member of the GC3 Startup Network. Christian studied biotechnology at the University of Natural Resources in Vienna. During his work at the Research Institute of Textile Chemistry at the University of Innsbruck, they found out how to direct enzymatic action on denim fabric. The idea was patented, and Christian went on to found Actacel to develop and sell environmentally friendly chemicals, giving the huge look on genes. So thank you both to Sonia and Christian for offering to present today, and I will hand it over to you. Thank you very much, Julie, for um, the kind introduction and also the invitation uh, to this webinar. I'm very pleased um, to be able to present Chemsec Marketplace, our newest project. And uh, I would like to start with uh, also a little bit of an introduction of my organization. So if you could, yeah, thank you. So Chemsec, um, if you haven't heard from us, uh, we are an environmental organization. We are based in Sweden and we were found already uh, a few years ago by four environmental NGOs to work so lately on the topic of chemicals. We do get our funds from uh, government, uh, but also from charity funds from a global level and uh, we are quite pleased that we are growing right now especially the topic of substitution is an important one um, and uh, in whole europe authorities and uh, policymakers are trying to uh, step up the efforts on substitution we are a, bit, a little bit a different um, uh, organization, a different um, NGO than others. We are not uh, bashing companies or climbing uh, chimneys, but we do work with uh, companies. And uh, you see here already our range of um, companies we have in the Campsec Business Group. This is quite an exclusive uh, club because we would like to have only one or two from every sector. And uh, we are quite proud that we had uh, a lot of um, really multinational brands. And they are quite, in our eyes, uh, they do have quite a progressive chemical management. And uh, so therefore we are talking with them on a continuous basis to step up uh, the efforts on uh, improving chemical management and also getting their advice and input um, for, um, our policy work, because that is the second uh, part of what we do, besides working with uh, businesses and uh, business tools, we are working to implement um, chemical legislation that is in uh, Europe, mainly the legislation uh, that is called REACH, registration, evaluation, and authorization of chemicals. Next slide, please. But today I'm delighted to present you um, our newest project and uh, this is called Marketplace. And Marketplace really should offer solutions because uh, so far we have concentrated on um, listing hazardous chemicals. You may be aware of our so-called um, SIN list, substituted now list. 
But now we are more and more moving um, to the solution side. Um, and um, we realize that there are already quite uh, a number of alternatives to hazardous chemicals out there, but they are really hard to find. Um, and uh, it's not only for us uh, hard to find, but also for companies who are looking for alternatives. And so we uh, got the request from our business group, um, why don't you put together what is already out there? And we thought um, that is a really good idea, uh, also to increase the visibility of the safe alternatives so that uh, we really provide the solutions um, to uh, simplify su uh, substitution for the companies. And uh, our biggest aim is really to connect supply with demand. So really do matches. We call ourselves uh, also a dating site uh, because we really would like to see that um, uh, persons who are looking for safe alternatives really do meet those ones who are producing and offering them. And, uh, you know, in Europe, uh, we have um, uh, the, no, not only the buzzword <laughs> circular economy, but it's really high on the political, uh, political agenda. Um, in the European Commission, we have um, four commissioners who are really very keen on, um, on bringing circular economy to life. Because, um, you know, from a policy perspective, this is seen that they can, can regain the material value, but also um, get a lot of uh, jobs in recycling businesses and so on in Europe. So circular economy is really high on the political agenda in Europe. And um, to make it really work, in our eyes, you have to get rid of hazardous chemicals because you only can make a material circular, you can use it again and again, only if you can get rid of the hazardous chemicals in the, in the first stage. So um, also here on Marketplace, um, you, can, um, uh, you can show your material and uh, we will make more efforts also to show how it uh, really uh, helps us for circular economy. Marketplace is a B2B tool, so it's not for end consumers, even if we have some end consumer products there. But uh, generally, it's uh, aimed, um, targeted for uh, businesses. Next slide, please. So, um, for safer alternatives, what do we mean with that? Um, and um, we do have different criteria, what is allowed on the platform. So um, the criteria is mainly that there shouldn't be a substance of very high concern in the products. And uh, this is a term mainly used in Europe because it's part of, um, of the REACH legislation uh, and substances of very high concern are um, defined by, for ex by the hazardous properties. So for example, uh, carcinogenic or mutagenic um, and um, toxic to reproduction is one, CMR substances is one, but also persistent and bioaccumulative and toxic um, compounds are forbidden in our safer alternatives, of course. And we do go one step further because our SIN list, um, the substance list we have developed in ChemSec, is uh, predicting which compounds which substances will get regulated in the in the near future and so also those sin substances shouldn't be in this uh, safer alternatives and therefore our um, chemical experts um, look at the, um, the advertisements which are which we receive and uh, and check uh, if the criteria are met Nevertheless, we won't um, test any uh, material and, and uh, products because that's not uh, possible from our side. But uh, we, because it's very transparent, I think um, we will get hints and uh, yeah, also remarks from the public and also competitors if something is not, 
as it should be. So, um, and you also, you can be ranked um, due to your um, third party certifications you know, through your labels, so you can be ranked higher. We aim for a global outreach. We have been in the US last year to three conferences. Um, this year, we would like to concentrate on Europe. We uh, will um, this year also go to um, sector fairs, which we haven't done so far, but uh, uh, we will, for example, we will start with a textile fair uh, in Munich um, uh, next week. So, and we aim uh, to go to uh, more fairs um, in the future to meet either uh, companies who could uh, be provider um, and um, help us uh, uh, and, and advertise on our marketplace, but also those ones who are possible buyers for those alternatives, we would like to meet and see um, how um, they can implement looking at marketplace more often. So our aim for this is, Yes, we would like to have the connection between the buyer and the seller. Next slide, please. And how does such an advertisement look like? Um, here you see three advertisements and uh, you have to write in, in the advertisements, of course, the description of the use and function. Uh, uh, we uh, are always also stating which hazardous substances it can replace because that is a main driver for our buyers. And of course, uh, in which sector um, the material in the product can be used and uh, also for, for which applications. As I said, it's very welcome that you uh, upload legal requirements, standards, third party certifications or labels because this will rank your alternative higher. And uh, we also um, state the contact details of the supplier so that's easy to get in touch for, for the buyers. So far, this is completely free of cost. Um, and, um, um we are thinking about a business model but we as we are an ngo and uh, very much into sharing uh, our knowledge um this will be for more detailed versions but uh, there will be always also a, a, a free part um to marketplace in the future next slide please and who are the users here. We have uh, identified three types. So on the right side, you see the downstream users, those ones who are using the alternatives, who are looking for them. They really explore the advertisements. You see here um, the website and the rolling um, advertisements. But they also can, if they don't find an alternative, um, what they're looking for, they also can put a request into that. So, for example, we also have um, put into our request um, the GC3 um, um, challenge of last year and uh, so that uh, people can see that there is a demand for specific substances, for specific um, materials and products and come up with ideas. And of course, the sol solution providers, they are offering their alternatives, their advertise, and also they can, um, they, they can browse the requests. But we also have uh, other stakeholders and uh, because we are a bit um, not the typical marketing route, we are an environmental NGO, we also do have um, complete different um, other stakeholders like um, policymakers. Uh, we have also the European Chemical Agency uh, on board. Um, they are also putting requests up um, if they are authorizing as a very hazardous substance they are always wanting to know are the alternatives already there because then the authorization is very limited so they uh, are putting up also requests so we have quite um, a nice audience we see we also when we um, looked at the, at the audience we also realized that a lot of universities are looking at our website and um, a lot of uh, companies really worldwide so um, 
but we are still um, stepping up. We are still, I would say, in our beginning. So um, we happy to see that's uh, even more growing. Next slide, please. So, but what what are your benefits um, as a solution provider? I think it's uh, really easy to upload ads. We made it user friendly. We really wanted to make it easy, and uh, we estimate that it takes ten to fifteen minutes if you have uh, you, if you market your alternative already. Uh, you have texts, and you just can copy paste it. What takes sometimes time, uh, we realized, is um, more the um, decision in internally, uh, especially of uh, bigger chemical or uh, companies in general, not only chemical companies, but also other solution providers. It takes them quite a while to get to their internal goal, especially because um, bigger companies are also not used to uh, market their products uh, at a uh, environmental uh, uh, organizations platform. So um, that uh, takes a little bit of um, uh, communication, but we are quite happy that we have uh, reached out to big and small ones. So uh, we have already a, a lot of solution providers online. Um, but And as I said, it's really easy to use. You can reach new customers um, on a global level. Um, you maybe not, you haven't, um, maybe not aware that um, those companies who are on our website are really interested in your in your alternatives, but um, we really do see matches uh, there from um, from different sites. And as I said, this is probably not a, a traditional marketing channel you use, but we really do have an engaged audience. On the other side, as uh, customers, buyers, uh, procurers, uh, you can browse among safer solutions. They are all in one place. It's not uh, only for a certain sector, what you normally find, but really for a lot of different sectors, you can find them. You can be really inspired by innovative solutions and you can contact, of course, the suppliers directly on the platform. Next slide, please. We also thought, okay, maybe we should um, show those companies and those uh, also associations who are, do really like marketplace and look at it in a constant and uh, continuous way. So um, uh, we offered um, those companies the, the possibility to be a supporter, which means that they are just um, listed on the website and um, and show that there is a demand side um, for for the advertisements and uh, at the moment we have um, the current supporters you see here with uh, some of their logos um, that was just a, a beginning where we thought okay we have to show who is um, who is looking at the website um, exactly so um, let's move to the next slide please so Tash, <clears throat> just to summarize again um, we have um, the solution providers simplicity is in all it matters of course um, it's a unique marketing opportunity and you will find an interest audience and on the other side for the buyer you get a global platform to look for safer alternatives all in one place and uh, search and find solutions that you are interested in, and you can contact your supplier directly. Next slide, please. And as you heard in my introduction, I'm coming from the investment um, banking scene. Uh, it's quite a long time since I worked there, but um, I have uh, translated um, information from CAMSEC into information that is valid for uh, for investors. So, for example, um, you see here the SIN producer list, which is um, where, where our substance um, list of uh, hazardous chemicals has been translated 
uh, because, uh, uh, you know, investors are not interested in substances. They can't pronounce it <laughs> uh, or rarely, uh, but they are interested in, um, in companies and which companies producing what. So I translated the sin list into a list of companies uh, and how many uh, sin substances do they produce. And now with uh, moving more to the opportunity side, also for investors, it's really interesting to see what, um, who is out there, who produces um, alternatives, uh, what will be the market for the future. So we started uh, now to link those, um, those two. Um, and as you see here, um, you have this, the same producer list. Um, and uh, normally the investors are really looking at financial risks. Yeah. So um, substance of very high concern, of course, of course, uh, they have higher costs. They have a reputational risk and also liability risks. So that is the financial um, risk side. But also um, they would like to look at opportunities. So um, what are the trends um, of society um, and um, what is upcoming legislation? So where do we find also market opportunities? And um, here you see that um, uh, Clariant has uh, already um, put a, a alternative also on our, on our marketplace. So they are seen as a, a producer um, of thin substance, of course, but also of uh, that they are offering uh, alternative um, chemicals and uh, products. And uh, this is just a very beginning. We are currently um, revising how we should um, um, uh, talk with the investors in the future. And probably this will move to a, a two part um tool where we on the one side uh, list the sin producers but on the other side the alternative producers something like that will be coming up in the future but i just wanted to show you that um this is not only interesting for for a buyer for a procurer but also for an investor next slide please Yes, and here you find um, a first um, where status, where are we today? This is already, this was from end of last year and we have moved already. So uh, at the moment we have uh, over 130 adver advertisements from around 75 companies. Um, we have 17 supporters now. Um, uh, I've, uh, I've shown you already. And um, we are at uh, two contacts uh, initiated by per day. Our audience is around uh, 4,000 users per month and also increasing. And um, 1,800 ad advertisements are viewed per month. We not only have advertisements on our website, but also articles about um, the topic of substitution. And we really have incredible um, increasing numbers as you see we have uh, plus 200 percent in the users and also plus 230 percent in the advertisements so uh, we are quite happy that it's um, that it's moving and um, yes uh, i think um, that's it uh, for now maybe if you just um, um, go to the last um, um, slide please here on the right, um, you find also um, our other tools. Um, so we have uh, Chemsec Marketplace. I told you already about um, the sin list, the substance of uh, a very high concern. Um, we developed uh, already uh, 11 years ago. We have the sin producer list. This is the invest investor tool. And then we have two more um, tools I haven't um, stated now so far similarity is uh, a check for uh, chemicals which are not on a sin list but uh, you can then check them if they do have similarities um, uh, similar hazardous uh, properties or not and uh, the textile guide is more specifically for the the textile sector so um, these are our tools and um, at the moment i would like to thank you for your attention and uh, 
I would like um, to introduce you to Christian. You have uh, heard already, um, he is the CEO of Actisel, um, and I'm very pleased to have him here because uh, he is um, um, not only part of the GC3 network, but he's also has placed an advertisement on, uh, on Marketplace and uh, can um, uh, tell you more about uh, practicalities and also introduce um, his uh, product uh, to you. Okay, so uh, this is uh, your time now, Christian. Thank you very much. Hello and uh, thanks uh, for the invitation. Um, Today, I would like to tell you a little bit uh, about the modern methods of jeans production, what uh, we think uh, will be the future uh, to get the used look on the jeans and uh, uh, one product what we have developed uh, to support these uh, new technologies. Next slide, please. Every year, there are uh, 4 billion jeans produced. Uh, and approximately 90% uh, of these jeans uh, have a sort of used look on it. So they are bleached, uh, abraded and uh, treated with chemicals uh, in order to make them uh, fashionable and uh, make them sell. Next slide, please. However, um, this bleaching of jeans often uh, is done at great cost to health and to the environment. Uh, for sure, you remember that in 2010, there was this sandblasting scandal. Uh, sandblasting was dominating the, the industry, but uh, because of uh, the type of use in, in the production countries, uh, it caused silicosis uh, to the workers and then uh, it got banned. Uh, since then, uh, potassium permanganate uh, got uh, more and more used and now is the uh, industry standard. It's very cheap and effective. Um, and uh, yeah, I would say almost every garment has uh, PP spray on it. Uh, but um, it is hazardous to workers. And in uh, October 2018, the ECHA uh, published that uh, uh, Potassium permanganate is suspected of damaging the unborn child. And more than that, uh, it also contains heavy metals, uh, which goes to the effluent. And uh, the producers now, they are searching for new technologies and uh, the laser technology uh, looks like one of the most promising ones uh, to um, uh, help to eliminate the potassium permanganate. Uh, the next slide, please. How does uh, the treatment normally work? So without the laser, you have your uh, denim fabric. The denim fabric is uh, stewed and tailored into a garment. And then uh, the first step in the laundry uh, is to use sandpaper and mark the areas on the knees and at the, at the hands uh, where the, the bleach uh, should uh, take place. And then we have two uh, stages of chemical bleach. One is a color adjustment where the whole color of the uh, jeans is getting uh, modified. And one is uh, normally a PP spray where these localized uh, effects go on. After that, it's washed. Next slide, please. With the laser treatment now, you can replace this manual processing because this manual abrading is done with uh, with the laser. Uh, you save uh, time, you save uh, costs. Uh, the workers who are uh, abrading with the sandpaper, they inhale the dust particles. Uh, so you can also eliminate some risks in the production. Um, but uh, not every every style of garment can be produced without chemicals. So sometimes there is still some hazardous waste from these chemicals. And um, if you have some stretch or polyester fibers in, in the fabric, uh, sometimes this cannot be treated or can only be treated very, very slow because uh, the fibers don't uh, uh, withstand the temperature of the laser. Next slide, please. 
Um, that's why ActiCell developed a chemical which should work together with the laser and eliminate these uh, last disadvantages what we have. Next slide, please. And um, we tried to make a product which enables the full design control, what is now uh, what we are now used with the conventional process. This also should be uh, uh, possible with the laser. Please go on to the next slide and then follow one more. Yeah. ArcTCell is used instead of the chemical. Uh, bleach step so we apply our chemical uh, instead of other chemicals instead of pp for example we we go for the laser treatment and the laser activates our product and then the bleaching takes part thereby we eliminate uh, hazardous chemicals like potassium permanganate uh, we also sometimes use it instead of uh, chlorine bleach and uh, we create a healthier workforce with that and uh, since uh, we use uh, less power at the laser, we can run the laser faster. So we reduce costs. And because of this less uh, power, also uh, stretch fabric can be treated um, with the laser. And uh, with our product, we uh, re uh, achieve all the regulatory compliance, what is uh, or what should be the new industry uh, standard. Next slide, please. Uh, we are already in mass production with the product. Uh, we have some uh, direct sales where we have selected uh, manufacturers all over, all over the world. And uh, these are companies where we get some feedback about the performance of the product and uh, where we can uh, improve uh, uh, the, the product more and more. And we also have some licensees and uh, distribution partners all over the world, which uh, sell the product under their own brand name. Next slide, please. Now, coming to the point, uh, working with Chemsec, um, Amanda Catamol uh, called me one day and she said, do you know uh, Chemsec? Do you know Marketplace? I said, no, no, I don't know. And uh, she um, introduced us to this uh, uh, homepage and to the system. And yeah, she motivated me to, to take part. And uh, we have already two products listed in the Marketplace. Um, the usability to Enter your product is very, very easy. So it's very intuitive. I didn't need help and normally I always need help. <laughs> what I like is uh, you have these uh, categories where you can uh, place your product and assign um, uh, a category. And also you have the search for alternative uh, requests, uh, what Sonia already uh, presented before. What we like as a small company, as a startup company, no, please go back. Uh, what we like as a, a small company is the visibility that our own products are presented uh, next to products of very big companies. And um, for a startup company, you very often when you are going for financing, you get the question, are there some other companies uh, which are similar to you? Uh, which valuation do they have? And for us, it was very difficult in Europe to find other companies which are at the same stage like we. And uh, uh, we found some uh, other companies also um, on, on the marketplace uh, with, where we can compare with. And uh, we, we also found already some similar minded companies and we uh, already started to uh, get some cooperation and product ideas because of the, the products and the companies uh, who are there. Okay, thank you very much for um, listening to me. That's the, the end of, of my part. Excellent. So thank you both very, very much. I appreciate your presentations. Now we will open uh, for question and answer discussion. So we do have some that have come in. If uh, you would like anyone on the phone, uh, on the webinar that would like to submit a question, please go ahead and enter your question 
into the questions panel and we will do our best to get to all of them. So the first question is actually one for me. Uh, will the slides for this webinar be uh, available after the presentation? So um, as customary with GC3 presentations or webinars, we will make the recording available on our website after this uh, session. So give us a, a, maybe a day or a few hours to get that posted and we will make that available on our website. Another question, how does the marketplace display production capacity for new alternatives? We've seen this as a major obstacle for early startups looking to find new commercial partners. Sonia? Yes, um, thank you for this uh, question. Um, you can market uh, your alternative already at an early stage. Um, you um, have the possibility to um, check uh, a checkbox where you say um, uh, you are already in full production, or you this is uh, in develop under development, so uh, uh, you can also put it there already at, at an early stage. Okay, great, thank you. Another question: Is there any vetting of the advertisements on the marketplace? Uh, for example, the products on the marketplace all sound excellent, but is anyone checking the credibility of the claims? Yes, this uh, question uh, regarding credibility, um, we have discussed this uh, uh, really deeply <laughs> in CAMSEC um, because um, we had run a project uh, quite similar to, or not quite, yeah, a starting project called Subsport. It was a European project. And there we really had um, a lot of verification and um, um only products could be there who really um uh, were transparent with the ingredients and so on but um actually um this had been really very difficult um to be transparent especially if you are a company who have uh, invented something new you don't want to share uh, your ingredients with everyone and um so we thought uh, no um what we do is um we it's a little bit a dating site, yeah. We um, we show what's around, and um, we want to match um, um, the buyer with the seller. <clears throat> but then they have to um, to see if it works or not. They they have to um, um, discuss um, their uh, requirements and um, and uh, things. So therefore, we verify only. <coughs> Sorry for that. We verify uh, in looking at um, at the um, material safety data sheets, um, and uh, also we do have uh, chemical experts looking at uh, the product and the material. But of course, uh, this is uh, so many folds in so different sectors that uh, we won't be able to um, to know everything uh, by detail. But uh, as I said, um, we have a ranking system. And in future, we also would like to have more rankings by, um, by the buyers. So which, which alternative they found really interesting and really useful. And uh, so that um, the, the best um, alternatives will end up in the, in the top search, more or less. So it's a little bit of a self-learning and self-developing um, method. Um, we are um, imposing here. All right, thank you. Another question regarding the, the website. Can you search by class of chemicals or do you need the exact name of the chemical to see where the safer, safer alternatives are? Um, we have um, the search function, we have developed it um, further. Uh, you can search, I think, uh, it's a, I must admit that um, I'm not completely into the details, um, but um, you, um, I think I'm just, um, I'm just checking if um, uh, you also can look for groups of, um, of chemicals, yes. So you don't have to, you don't have to know the complete name of, um, of the substance, you can also search for groups. And you also have um, the possibility to um, use some filters. So 
for example, in which sector it's used or um, the technical function um, or the material article category. So you can really um, define your search in more detail if you want to. Great, thank you. Um, another question, we have time for a few more. You mentioned several times regarding the connections and uh, somewhat like it's a dating site or, or different examples of that. How does Marketplace track the connections between the buyer and the seller and is there any um, requirement in terms of information sharing that's not readily apparent? Well, um, it's um, what we do offer is um, that um, uh, you can click on the contact um, immediately from from an advertisement. So you more or less uh, get an um, an email, not a form, but uh, an email uh, directed to this person. That's all what we offer. So uh, uh, we can't track uh, what's really happening. Especially, uh, we have talked to some of our business group members. They said they will never use um, our contact form or or um, uh, the possibility of uh, contacting a company because uh, they don't want to see uh, to to be seen at all. So um, they rather um, look at um, at the alternatives, um, look at the company, and then contact them themselves. What is a bit of a pity, of course, for us, because we can't um, exactly see, um, uh, did we do uh, matches? We can um, we can only uh, more or less count the numbers the, the contact um, button is clicked. Um, that's what we can count, but we won't see um, the matches. But I think um, that is also in the business world, this is, uh, quite normal and as as we are not um we are not a commercial organization yeah we are an ngo our our main interest is um to um deliver this match to make it possible that a match is uh, can be done and uh, our interest is that uh, the alternatives are getting more visible and really seen by uh, by the business world out there so um that's uh, what we do Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, Christian, we have a question for you. We'll let Sonia off the hook for a little bit. <laughs> Has the marketplace helped you with fundraising from investors? Do you include this information with information packets for investors? Um, we didn't. Uh, we didn't have a financing round uh, closed yet, but. Uh, um, it was. It was good to see for us uh, to. Uh, uh, similar companies uh, with whom we could talk. Uh, I didn't get the real numbers, but uh, uh, I got some some information uh, about what uh, uh, others are doing uh, in a in a very positive way. And uh, yeah, we we could transport this information already. Yes. All right. And I'll add another question for you, Christian. Mm -hmm. What kinds of inquiries have you gotten as a result from your of your advertisements on Marketplace? Uh, sorry, can you repeat the, the beginning uh, of the question? Sure. Uh, what kinds of inquiries have you received as a result from your advertisement on the Marketplace? Uh, we didn't receive uh, an inquiry yet, uh, but uh, we started a cooperation with one company. So yeah, that was more an outcome, I think. Uh, that uh, the visibility is there and i don't think that uh, especially big companies they they go through the the, the website uh, and uh, uh, find or, or go through the website directly to the companies and i'm not sure if they would tell us uh, that uh, uh, they found us there but what happened is that uh, uh, some companies, they came out of the blue for me. And uh, uh, I was wondering where, where did they find our name? Where did they get all this information about our products? And uh, I suppose that uh, uh, some of them found us uh, on the marketplace, but they just didn't tell us. 
Right, certainly that can happen. <laughs> All right, another question, um, probably more for Sonia. Have you seen any trends in the types of advertisements? Are they functional categories, large companies, startups? What do you typically see? Uh, very good question. Um, well, there there have been a few. Um, um, uh, well, how should I call it? Uh, a few topics which are uh, more present on um, on the marketplace, but uh, we know why. Uh, because, for example, the textile industry is really. Um, uh, we have quite a lot of uh, alternatives for the textile industry, um, but it, that's because we have also worked with the textile industry for some years now. We do have uh, really good contacts um, and also um, very knowledgeable persons like uh, Amanda Katamo that uh, Christian already uh, mentioned. She was uh, working for us in contacting textile companies and uh, so therefore there's a, a big topic there. A second topic is um, uh, from product side is flame retardants, um, safer flame retardants. I must uh, must say um, because also here we have um, good contacts to the industry, and um, and they are also quite um, interested uh, to come onto marketplace. And a third topic was. Um, uh, um, the alternatives for chromating and that's because uh, we have in Europe a um, the authorization of um, of uh, chrome 6 so um, the ban more or less the legal ban and um, and now a lot of companies are looking for alternatives and um, so that they're not need to go to the authorization process of um, of the European Chemical Agency because that's quite costly. And uh, so during this process, a lot of alternative providers uh, came forward to um, to uh, the European Chemical Agency, and uh, we've made uh, contact with them. And um, and uh, again, we do have um, many alternatives for for chromating. Um, on marketplace, so these are more or less the the content topics. And then the question was: Is it um, do we have more startups or big companies? Well, it's um, for startups. I think um, they are um, quite flexible. Um, we have um, that's easier for us. Um, we have to explain who we are and what we do. But um, um, they don't have so such a different internal uh, decision uh, making, whereby the big chemical companies, um, well, I can tell you with some of them, um, they they are quite keen. But we are talking since two years, and um, now finally uh, we have uh, we have um, some big chem chemical companies um, on marketplace, for example. Air products, but also um, Nurion, which is the um, the company formerly called Acto, um, and also um, uh, which 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 one? There's another one. Just uh, Daystar, yes. I think, is also there. Who is there? Daystar is also there. And Daystar, Daystar, and Clariant is there. So there are a few, and uh, I know that uh, many more are thinking about um, placing. But it's uh, it's as I said, a really difficult process for them. So, um, uh, but uh, we are quite happy that we have at the moment uh, qu quite a difference there. Yeah, from startups to really big chemical companies, everything is there. Excellent. So um, as we wrap up, I'll ask if anyone has any additional questions. Uh, in the meantime, can a university be identified as a solution provider or does it require it to be a company? Uh, no. Well, we have so far, I'm just thinking, but um, I don't think that we have a university at the moment there offering some alternatives. Um, there are some institutes like Fraunhofer Institute, which is um, probably uh, yeah like an R and D institute. Um, 
but of course, if um, if you have uh, a material, a substance, uh, an, an alternative, I think um, spin-offs from university are really um, very welcome as well. So, certainly. Great. So why don't we uh, move ahead, I think. We've addressed as many questions as we can in this time. Again, I'd like to thank you both, Sonia and Christian, for sharing your experience with the ChemSec Marketplace. And as we wrap up, I just want to remind everyone about the February 1st application deadline for startups to be considered for the 2019 Technology Showcase. In addition, next slide, the GC3 Annual Innovators Roundtable is on May 7th through 9th of this year in Cincinnati, Ohio. Registration is now open for members. And then next slide, finally, uh, we would like to invite you to register for our next webinar in February addressing intellectual property. So again, thank you to everyone for calling today. Special, very, very special thanks to Sonia and Christian uh, for sharing your, your knowledge and your experience with the program. And we hope to have you all join us again in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.